Rahman Rahim. The third duty <coughs> that Imam Al Ghazali Rahmatullah Ta'ala lists as a duty towards the rights of brotherhood in Islam concerns the tongue, which should sometimes be silent and other times the tongue should speak out. Regarding the silence of the tongue, it pertains to not mentioning a brother's fault in his absence or his presence. Rather, should you feign ignorance. So even when you... And remember here we're not talking about a fault in Sharia. Someone's committing a haram in front of you. It's a religious obligation for you to tell them that it is haram. And the hadith, the famous hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that if you see something haram, something wrong, then you stop it with your hands. If you can't, you stop it with your tongue. And if you can't, you hate it in your heart. And this is the lowest form of Iman. So, <clears throat> and Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi ta'ala, alayhi further in his Ihiya Alum al-Din, he says that he discusses the, the chapter that kind of person who himself commits that sin, tell others not to commit that sin. And Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, he goes into detail and he entails that, yes, even if a da'i, a person who invites toward Allah, himself is at flow, i.e. commits that sin. He should still, with the hope of Allah's forgiveness, invite others, because maybe that invitation to others to avoid that sin will cause that person to stop that sin. And because of the barakah of that, Allah will forgive the sinner's sin, but he can't stop himself. Right? So, Allah's mercy works in, works in mysterious ways. So, um, this speaks to different types of faults. Faults which are non-religious faults. You know, uh, you know, it could be anything. A person's uh, common thing. Um, and even if, even this scholars, they say that they should, you should find a way of explaining this to your friend. If you've got a friend whose breath stinks, for whatever reason, maybe he's a smoker, right? And, or you've got a friend who when he speaks, uh, he, he, his saliva, he spits out a lot of saliva. Then the first two, three times you should try and ignore it. Maybe it's happened, you know, haphazardly without the person control. But if it's a common fault, okay, then you should take that person away alone and explain to that person that look, as your as your brother, don't mind, but you there's this flaw. But Imam Ghazali rahmatullah, he goes further, he goes to a point of you killing your nafs. He says you should even ignore that. You should, you should feign ignorance completely and you should not contradict him when he talks, no dispute, no argue with him. You should not pry and quiz into his private affairs. On seeing him in the street or about some business, you should not start a conversation about the subject of your coming or going, nor ask him about his, for perhaps it will cause trouble to him to discuss and he may have to lie to you about it. Often, right, and this is the thing, in friendship, um, as friends, you may want, not want to reveal something to your friend, okay? The other friend, he should know about the, his friend's habits, okay? So if I, for example, have a friend, and my friend is a reserved person, doesn't really like to talk about their private affairs or what's going home, I shouldn't keep prodding and asking and asking and asking because eventually, due to his friendship, he's going to tell a lie. Rather, the environment of your friendship should be such that if he wants to feel like he wants to discuss with you the matters, his private matters, his secrets, then he should be able to do so. And if he doesn't want to, then you should accept that. But you shouldn't be, you know, sort of pressing and plodding. Some people, also, the thing you have to ask yourself is, when you're asking someone's, someone's issues, right, why are you asking? Are you able to, to help that person? Are you able to benefit or contribute towards the issue? And if the answer to those things are no, then there's no reason for you to know about this person's matters, even if he's a close friend of yours. You know, many times people get upset. Oh, you didn't tell me. And remember, this is different to having a friend and something joyous happening, like he's getting married and he doesn't tell you until the last minute. And you've been friends with this person for 10, 15 years. You know, that's actually against the usul of friendship, right? According to the sunnah. It's khilaf sunnah that is. 
right? Generally, there may be some specific reasons why he may tell, may, may have not told you, such as if it's a second marriage or whatever. Um, but but generally, uh, avoid pushing your friend to the point where he feels discomfort and he has to lie to protect himself, because this is against the usul of friendship. So Imam Ghazali says, keep silent also about the secrets he confines you in, and on no account divulge them to a third party, not even to his closest friends. Often. Often we are able to tell something to someone who's not that close rather than telling someone who is that close due to various array of reasons. Okay? Now if you happen to be a person that someone's came and explained a or, to, or divulged a secret of theirs, you know, to get something off their chest, never should you then go to the closest friends of that person and say, Yo, you know what your boy told me? Has he told you? Right? Because this is one of the greatest sins. Right? Remember in Islam. Even if a letter from someone else's name comes and comes into your hand, it is haram for you to open that letter and to read it. Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmed Zakhan Rahmatullahi wa Ta'ala is we have said a lot of kalam upon this. He said it's haram. You know, some people they try and, you know, hold the kettle, put the letter on top, get it, get it loose just to read what's going on inside and seal it back up. La la just haram. Right? In the same way. If someone has told you their secrets, for you to divulge their secrets, this is also a monster. Haramat, haramat. So then Imam Ghazali says, keep silent from criticism of his dear ones and his family and his children, and also from relating other people's criticisms of him, for it is your informant who directly abuses you. And this is a hadith of Sayyidina Anas radiallahu an, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that um, that uh, he never faced anyone with some who, who said something displeasing for him, except that the hurt comes immediately from the informant, and then secondly from the one who is being related to. So, for example, if I come and tell you, right, that your brother has been doing X, Y, Z behind your back with your wealth, okay? Now, of course. If there's a dire need for me to do that, if there is no other way, then, you know, and, and, and if that means that I have to protect you from some, from some great loss, then of course I need to tell you, right? But say that it's nothing that serious, it's something petty, okay? Or you were criticized in a gathering by someone, or someone made a comment about you, and people were laughing, and I, I come to you and I say, you know, we were sitting the other day in the gathering with so and so, and something was, and so and so, who's your, who you know, who's your friend, he said something about you, and everybody laughed. Now, what is the benefit of telling this to my friend? Okay, apart from the fact that he's going to feel insecure, he's going to feel like he has a flaw which he may or may not have. If he has that flaw, there should be a better way of me as a friend telling him he's got that flaw. And then see, it's going to create hatred, doubt and suspicion in his mind regarding the other people. So rather, the Prophet Sallallahu said regarding trivial matters that the, 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 the hurt comes directly first from the informant. This is why trying not to be the bearer of bad news. Often we love being the bearer of bad news. Very, 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 very seldom do we actually promote good news about people. We like to tell about, you know, and this is human behavior. You know, if there's a nasty, horrible car crash somewhere, we're very quick to pull out our phone and record it and put it on our WhatsApp status and we'll tell people or on our Facebook. But if there's, you know, you go into a masjid and you see the first two rows filled with young, young brothers, mashallah, praying jama'ah, how many of us are going to pull our phone out and start making a WhatsApp status about that? Because it's positivity, you know, and, and as in news, positivity doesn't get you the attention. So let's report about something horrible and drastic and something unbelievable because that's shocking and that's all and that's what gets responses. And this is again a human disease and illness. Then uh, Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he also says, and of course you should not hide any praise you may hear. For the pleasure in it is received directly from the conveyor of the compliment as well as indirectly from the original source. And likewise, right, if the person, you know, if you're getting praised by somebody and I'm in that gathering and somebody's praising you, if the praise is truthful, for example, if someone turns around and says, this brother, mashallah, he recites beautiful Quran, I was in a gathering and recited beautiful Quran, 
There is no harm that when I see him, I say to him, Brother Faisal, MashaAllah, you know, Brother Ibrahim was praising your Quran in a gathering. He was sitting there and all the brothers were like, MashaAllah, this brother's got a nice voice. What is the harm of that? In fact, Imam Ghazali says, unless you know that it's going to get to his head and cause his ego to inflate, that's a separate issue. If you think this person, as your friend, has an ego problem, then you shouldn't praise him. Even direct praises or indirect praises in this case, you shouldn't. But if you think, that th there's no harm, this brother is a humble brother, it's going to encourage him to learn and to better his kira'ah even further. Then Imam Ghazali says the only reason you would hide that is that internally you are envious of him. You are envious of him. Right? You couldn't take that so and so was praising him, therefore you didn't tell him because you harbor envy towards him. And remember, envy is a cancer. It's a cancer. Sometimes it's apparent. Sometimes it's very subtle and very hidden. May Allah protect us from envy. Amen. Then Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi, in short, he sums this up. He said that in short, you should keep silent about any unpleasant speech towards your, your brother in general or in particular, unless you're obliged to speak out out of amal bil ma'roof wa nahi anihi al munkar, forbidding evil and enjoying good. If your friend is committing haram, speak out. Then he says that. You know, uh, you should, uh, you should, you, in, in such cases, you don't need to worry about his disapproval since what you do is beneficial to him. Sometimes your brother may hate you because you stopped him from a sin. But at this moment, you don't care about his feelings. Your main thing is to, to prevent him from the greater harm, which is him breaking the laws of Sharia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us and give us the ability to fulfill our rights towards our brothers and our friends. وَمَا عَلِيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمَبِينَ وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ